The Witness. Starring Gene Raymond and Jay Meadows in The Witness. And here is your host in Hollywood, Robert Young. In the normal course of most any day, every one of us is a witness to matters of life and death. The way we involve ourselves in these vital matters makes our own lives worthwhile or meaningless. The great Roman tutor, Seneca, in about the year 50 A.D., said, Men do not care how nobly they live, but only how long. Although it is within the reach of every man to live nobly, but within no man's power to live long. We all know people who put their whole purpose into making the body so physically fit that they lose the purpose to live. Sonic at the forehand, Dean Peck deep to the backhand. He's running in. Sonic a weak return, and our champion, Dean Peck, puts that away with no mistake. He's got this tail smash wrapped up, ready to take hold of Peck serves. Hello? Oh, please call me back, will you? I can't leave the game now. Sonic returns half caught. Peck a half volley. Sonic chasing it. He lobs. And the cause of Peck's mercy equals. Like Dean Peck, that was a bad miss. Wait a minute. He's bent down almost as though he had a cramp. Oh, no. no. No, he's all right. He's going back to serve, and he's got that mm. great, tough look we all know so well. The look of a man who won't lose. Now he serves, and eight. Hi, Dean. Boy, that was great. Thanks. Man, you're in good shape to move that fast in all this heat. Thanks, Barry. Sonic was tough on the third set, though. He just didn't quite make it. And they always say no one can tire Dean Beck. Yeah. But you know, at the end, when you missed that smash, you looked as though you might let Sonic off the hook for a minute. Yeah, well, I've been having a touch of stomach cramp. You know, concentrating on the kill. You ever had it? Me? No. But a lot of the boys do. A new thing for you, isn't it? No, it's nothing to worry about. Just a twinge for a few seconds. Hey, what the... Hey, you swear right across into my lane. Are you drunk or something? Yeah, I'm sorry. I had a sudden cramp. Cramp? Why, are you... Hey, I know your face. Aren't you Dean Peck? I was just in your tennis match a little while ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh... Vanessa, Vince Vanessa. Say, Mr. Peck, aren't you feeling good? Oh, I'm okay. It's just it's just this cramp for a moment. You have to watch out. Sure, I can't do anything for you? No. Call a doctor or something? Oh, uh, no. I'm okay. I'm... <laughs> just sorry it happened. Well, no okay. damage done. <laughs> but you take care of yourself. <laughs> Dr. York, please. Uh, hello, George. It's Dean Peck. Say, can I drop around tonight? Okay, about eight then, huh? Okay, George. I'll see you then. Hi, Sally. Is Bill in? Is Dean Peck. Hi, Bill. Dean Peck. Ah, thanks a lot. Yeah, I'm going fine. Never played better. Say, look, Bill. Uh, you got a few minutes free tonight? Say, about quarter to nine. Good, that's fine, then. I'll, I'll drop around. Well, did you have any doubts? Oh, no, silly. But still, it must have been awful in that heat. Do you know that you had me worried? 
Thornton. Oh, darling, I wish you'd let me watch you play. Let's not go over all that again. I just don't want to know you're in the stands. But the announcer said you looked all doubled up after that smash. Oh, why can't they mind their own business? Can I miss a ball without everybody analyzing it or chewing it over? Don't take it so seriously, darling. It's nothing. You know, you can't go through two weeks of national tennis without some strain. Strain, strain, strain. You get to be 37 and they're all waiting for you to drop dead. Well, thank heaven we're free tonight and tomorrow. Well, not tonight, honey. I, uh, I promised I'd drop over and see Bill for a few minutes. Tonight? Oh, Dean, you never give yourself any rest at all. You always act like you're running from the baseline to the net. Yeah, I'm sorry, honey. You just wait till tomorrow. We'll stay right here and I promise you I'll relax. Over on your back, Dean. Okay. Oh, that's it. You say it was only for a few seconds each time? Yeah, that's all. Dizziness and then this uh, pain in the stomach. Mm-hmm. Also, I felt like my heart was stumping pretty hard. Okay. Sit up and put your shirt on, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, what's the matter, Doc? Something I've told you would come one day, but you've never listened. Does anybody listen? Oh, some folks listen so hard they hear three times as much as I say. No, Dean, you've got to listen this time. You've come to the end of the road. The, uh, the end of the court, I mean. You mean I'm not fit to play tennis? What happened to you today was nothing surprising. These spasms are nervous tension, but your heart had just about all the big strain it can take. It's like a, a dive or an astronaut. Championship tennis is a young man's job. Give up, Dean. Keep a sports store or use your reputation to turn to something else. Uh, what if I don't have anything else? Oh, you'll find it. Gilly will help you. Gilly? You mean sit around and let my wife work for me? No, thanks. Oh, I didn't say that. But Gilly wants to share what you're doing. Now you'll be able to work things out together. But this is the end of big tennis, Dean. I mean that. to bother you at night, Bill, but it was the best time. That's okay, Dean. Fire away. Bill, uh, just how much would I be worth? I mean, uh, if anything happened to me. Well, well, as your accountant, I've been trying to give you a chance to concentrate on that question for years. You know the answer. Very little. Uh, what's the trouble, Dean? Uh, a car nearly hit me today. It just made me do some thinking, that's all. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll check out what you're worth and send you a memo about possible cutting down and saving more. And we'll look into your insurance, and you can do something about that, too. Hello? Kelly, this is Bill Yeager. Is Dean there? Oh, hi, Bill. No, he's gone to the stadium. Well, I wanted to catch you after he'd gone. Why, Bill? What is it? Uh, you know, Dean came to see me right before last. Yes. He came to uh, ask me about what he was worth, you know, insurance, the house, a financial statement. What he was worth? Why all of a sudden? That's what I wanted to know. He, you know, he was looking strained. I wondered what Dr. York said. George? You mean Dean saw him? We saw him the same night he came to see me. Saw George? Why, he never told me. I wonder if there is something wrong. Look, I'll call you later, Bill. A Dean's match with Brock is on in just a few minutes. What happened to Dean? What's happened to Dean Beck? He's down the 
down, holding his stomach, and looks in bad pain. Oh, my poor Dean. Please, God. gun. Let's have a look at you. Do you want me to go out, George? Uh, no, I don't think so, Gilly. Let's see your chest, Dean. Yeah, I'm going uh, now to... I'll do all the talking, Dean. You answer yes or no. Mm-hmm. Same thing today? Dizziness and stomach pain? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just hoped you'd get through the week. It wasn't any use telling you to drop out of the tournament. What is all this, George? Why did Dean come to you? Huh? You knew? You be quiet, Dean. Bill called me. Well, I'm uh, happy to say no real harm's been done today. But what is it? Oh, no real mystery, Gilly. It's a man of 37 trying to act like a man of 25. He's had enough, Gilly, and he's got to stop. But he's not seriously ill. Tell me I've a right to know. No. No, he's not seriously ill, (laughs) except in his head. But he will be if he keeps on. Darling, we're home. Yes. Is the music too loud? No, no. I pushed the couch over here so you can easily get sun or shade. Mm-hmm. See, so you just pull the curtains if you get too hot. Yeah. <laughs> God, God, God. Oh, Dean. Dean, my <laughs> darling, don't. Tell me what it is, Dean, please. <laughs> Let me share it, please, Dean. Oh, we've got to face it sometime. May as well be now. Tell me, darling, please. Is the me saying? As long as I could win tennis matches, I could give you houses, travel, everything, and now it's gone. I'm useless to my wife, to anyone. All I had is gone. All you had? Oh, Dean, you're so wrong, darling. It sounds crazy to you, I know, but I feel happy. You're going to be all right, darling. Strong in a new way. And I'll be strong because you'll need me to be. What are we going to do? Well, we can't tell yet, but whatever it is, we'll do it together. And that's what matters, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I see, Dewey. It's not going to be easy learning to win another way. But you've helped me to begin to see you. We'll win, my darling. You're made of champion stuff. You have been listening to The Witness. And here again is your host, Robert Young. There's nothing wrong with being strong unless it's carried to the point of being unable to show any weakness. People like this usually determine to win at any cost. And, of course, we all know you can't always win. A marriage involves teamwork with a proper balance of strengths and weaknesses. Can marriage be what it's meant to be unless we can face our defeats as well as our triumphs? I'd like to thank Gene Raymond, Jane Meadows, Nestor Paiva, Peter Leeds, and James Edwards for sharing their talents with us. And thanks to each one of you for being with us. Transcribed in Hollywood, The Witness is produced by Marjorie Hunt Pearson, directed by Thomas Freebairn Smith, and written by Lawrence Waddy. This is Art Gilmore speaking for the Episcopal Church, which presents The Witness. We hope you'll join us again soon for the next Witness.